and ripped off. Oh, <laughs> the look like a unicorn threw up all over his truck. <laughs> Hopefully, he took pictures. <laughs> all right, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to BB9. <laughs> Okay, it's been two years, you guys. <laughs> we need some excitement here. I've been sitting in the office, not doing BB9, so I'm excited to be here and doing Zoom meetings. So thank you to those of you who did join us for, why is this not going? For uh, joining us for Zoom meetings, we do appreciate you guys doing that too. Okay, I'll fix it later. Um, so thank you all for being here so much. We really appreciate you coming out today um, and being here with us. I do need this on though. So thank you to our sponsors. We have MG&E, Park Bank, and Group Health Cooperative. Is there, are there anybody here from them? Yes, there are. Thank you so much. Um, also, thank you to the Hawthorne Suites for hosting us here. We appreciate them taking care of all of this. And then also Back TV for recording. They are recording this session, so you can see it afterwards, too, if you wanted to go back through and look at it um, as well. And we do have some Zoom people. Hi, Zoom people. They're watching us as well. So we're gonna take this moment right now. Um, over the last few years, we've had a lot of new members join us. So what we're gonna do is if you are a new member within the last two years, I will have you stand up, or if you're a new representative, have you stand up, and I'm gonna have you introduce yourself and just say a little bit about yourself, okay? We have new members here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Don't be shy. Hello, I'm Wendy Malaska. I'm a family practice physician who essentially got fed up with our current state of health care and left the big systems and started my own clinic, which is called Dedicated Family Care here in Fitchburg. It is a membership-based model. I don't deal with insurance, and I'm a much happier doctor because of it. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else new? Perfect. Hello, uh, Brad Hughes. I'm a Fitchburg resident. Uh, started uh, opened an office for a company called Shive Hattery. We're an architecture and engineering firm um, based in Iowa, but hadn't uh, had an office in Wisconsin until um, August of 2020. Uh, so glad to be here. Anybody else? Uh, Al Brzezak, I am the, yeah, I'm a good friend. <laughs> you can talk loud enough. Yeah. Director of Athletics at Edgewood College, uh, been there for 22 years, and uh, we're new members of the chamber this year. So. Yeah. Uh, my name's Brittany Knight, I'm the representing the Joint Chiropractic. We have four Madison area clinics, and I am the Assistant Manager of Operations. And then this is Dr. Aislinn, so she is joining me. And then I am as well an Edgewood College student, so I'll be graduating in Thank you. Is that everybody? I think that was everyone. Okay, then lastly, we have some new board members. So we're going to have the new board members stand up and introduce yourselves. I know you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, David Ryan Sukup, uh, agent with American Family Insurance. I just joined the board here in January. Uh, so I'm super excited to be more active here in Pittsburgh. Fitchburg resident. Fitchburg resident. Brandon's best friend. <laughs> I had nothing to do with his, with his board placement. Uh, hi, I'm Nick Watt with uh, Crane Rock and Swat. Uh, we're a law firm here, kind of uh, what I call the Swiss cheese of the uh, currently, hopefully getting fixed soon, the city of Fitchburg, Madison, town of Madison, uh, up near the Bell Line. Uh, just joined the board, board in January myself. Uh, looking forward to working uh, to make the uh, Fitchburg Chamber thrive, continue to thrive, and uh, meeting all of you. Thanks. Wonderful, thank you. Oh, uh, and Sarah. Oh, turn it. <laughs> <laughs> Angela pointed you out, wait a <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm Sarah from Hop House um, here in Fitchburg, obviously, and also Verona. Um, I just joined the board in January, along with these two gentlemen. Um, I'm excited to learn more about Fitchburg and be more involved, uh, so glad to be here. Thanks. 
And we're going to make Lane say something because he's the new president. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. Uh, Lane Manning, Dream Lane Real Estate Rent Deferred, uh, 2022 president. Um, yeah. One of my, my third, or third year, my first term on the, on, the, on the board, so very happy to take the president role from, from Scott. And um, yeah, just keep the thing moving and have some great presentations and educate our chamber on, on what we have going on in our, our community. So thank you. Great. Um, so we do have a couple of events coming up. Uh, we do have a, so if you guys remember when we used to do BB9, we had what was called chamber, chamber table talk. So it's where we kind of give you a topic to discuss with your table. We're still gonna kind of do that today, um, but we do it more as an event now. So we meet at the Oasis Cafe in Fitchburg and we come up with a topic and there's only 15 people that can come. We split you up into to two groups and you get to meet some new people and make some really great connections with different people. So if you wanna join us, our next one is on February 10th. We only have six spots left, so um, get on that right away. So there's several people in here that have been to it before and repeats, so that's great. On the 16th, we have the seventh annual Mastermind Trivia. It is sold out, so if you have a table, you're good to go. So if you don't, I'm sorry, next year. <laughs> Uh, we did just complete the 2022 Guide to Fitchburg, so that went to print yesterday with Ticey, and we have a few Ticey people in here, so thank you to them for doing that. They had no idea that they were doing it, but that's great. Um, so we did print that. That will be coming out sometime in the middle of February, so keep a lookout for those. If you would like any copies of those, yeah. let us know, and we can get you some copies to wherever you need them to go. So at this time, we are going to take just a brief moment with your table mates. Just go around and introduce yourselves, um, say a little bit about what you do, where you work, um, exchange business cards if you have those. Great opportunity to do that. So, so we're just gonna take just a few minutes to do that, so yeah. go at it. Yeah. That's a good yeah. 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 So how long have you all been doing what you do? So I'm sorry to love, I've been doing it for more than 10 years now. What do you look like? When COVID first happened, I first saw the extravaganza, it was like, no, we're going to work. I don't have the name of the door. I don't have the name of the door. It was a good 70 mile bike ride each way. But I bet you can figure out what we're finding. Oh, I bet. Yeah, well, Yes. So, so what are you saying? for 28 years and was a client. Well, you want to just go there. 15 years Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, they've been on. Okay, that's all the crap, right? All right, thank you. No, 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 no. It's been awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started because I know some of you got a chance to actually talk in the beginning as well. <laughs> And feel free to hang around afterwards as well and uh, chat too. <laughs> so we are very welcome. We are very excited to welcome uh, Edgewood College Athletics today. We have um, Al Brissack, who is the uh, Edgewood, Edgewood College Director of Athletics. Uh, since taking over his direct, since taking over his director of athletics, Al has led the Eagles athletic department to great success, both athletically and academically. 
During Elle's tenure, the Eagles have reaffirmed their commitment to academic excellence and the community. Brissek has also served as a member of various NCAA and NACC committees and two terms as the National Athletics Collegiate Conference's Director of Athletics Chair. That was a lot. That was a lot to say. <laughs> Did you have to say that every time you introduce yourself? <laughs> so with that being uh, said, please welcome our speaker today, Al Brissek. Can you hear me okay without this? I, can I, I use my coaching voice and we're good? All right. As long as you don't make me do sprints, I'm okay. <laughs> no, I promise I won't. I promise. We don't start practice for, uh, for another day or two, so we're good. So thank you for the time. Uh, this is, for us, we're super excited about this. This has been a long time coming. So I've been the athletic director for about 16 years. Uh, and I'm going to give you a little historical perspective on how we've gotten to today. Um, Two years prior to becoming the athletic director as the assistant athletic director, I started the process of looking for land that could potentially fit an athletic campus for Edgewood College. So it's been a long journey. Um, and, but there were very specific things that we needed to have. If you're not familiar with our campus on Monroe Street, we essentially have a gym, uh, a very small, very intimate, very loud, great home court advantage gym. but we also have 16 sports. So for our gym, basketball, volleyball, it's fantastic. Um, but we've had other sports, all of our outdoor sports have literally been training and playing everywhere from Windsor to Verona and everywhere in between. So we have student athletes that are traveling 45 minutes for practices and so on. Um, very challenging. And so we started this process of looking can we, can we find something that can develop? We've had a long-standing relationship with the city of Verona, uh, a fantastic relationship with the city of Verona. Gary's here from Verona Little League. We've had, a, a, in fact, since day one, I think since 99, uh, we've been very involved in, uh, in Verona Little League and so on. And, um, and that's a very important piece for us as an institution as well as an athletic department. Um, community involvement, um, uh, servant leadership, is something we speak with our athletes about all the time. And so to be able to look for opportunities where we could continue that. And um, randomly, word kind of traveled and somebody asked me if I could go to lunch at Monkey Shines. And uh, they asked me if I, I can't even remember, was it, what were you guys playing, cribbage? What were you playing? Yeah, uh, which I don't play. Um, and um, just started a conversation about the O'Brien farm and um, kind of the O'Brien family's vision for we love baseball, love athletics, we love what Edgewood College is doing. Could there be a possible relationship here? Could we look at, at doing something here? And then having conversations with the city of Fitchburg about it. And it's brought us to today where we're looking at roughly 42 acres at the corner of Seminole and Lacey that um, we are looking to develop into a uh, athletic and wellness campus. The added bonus, as I'll talk about in a little bit, is that Edgewood College has always, and our Dominican founding sisters have always had a passion for sustainability, a passion for the environment. Um, we've always had an environmental studies minor. Um, we just instituted a major as well two years ago. And there was an area of this property that was flooding all the time. And when we got involved in it and started looking at it, we had a hunch that it was probably wetland that had been farmed as much as they could. Brought in some experts to find out that in fact it, it was wetland. So there's about 12 acres that we have the opportunity to restore. Basically turn the clock back 200 years. And so we've got some, some Edgewood students in here and stuff and some, some alumni. And so they understand what I'm saying in terms of the passion on campus, the excitement on campus where people are like, wait a second, we can potentially build an athletic complex and restore some wetland and create a classroom scenario. This is fantastic. Um, and so we're very excited about, about moving forward with this. We're in the very preliminary stages. I cannot believe I'm still saying that. 17 plus years of working through this, but we're in the very preliminary stages. I was on the phone uh, with a, a Fitchburg resident the other day and uh, 
she was trying to ask me all kinds of questions. I, I, you are so far down the road right now from where we're thinking. I, I'm not trying to put you off. I just really don't have the answers to those things. We're trying to figure out the footprint right now and still positioning things. So I'm going to walk you through some slides, and I'd really like to spend most of the time answering questions, if that's okay with you. So where are we looking here? We'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Looking at Seminole and Lacey. There's a power station there on the corner. This is all solar fields now. And so it's that, that chunk of, of property right there. <clears throat> this is our preliminary plans right now. Um, as we've gone through the process and everything, we tried to dream big. We'd ra we can pare it down if we need to, um, but we wanted to kind of see uh, what, you know, in terms of size and everything. And I can go ahead and walk you through some of these components. Obviously, it's a baseball field. We've got a softball field. Soccer, lacrosse, track, tennis. This is an indoor training facility. People ask me all the time, what's the inside of that going to look like? That's one of them where I can tell you, I don't know yet. I know that it's a big square or a big rectangle right now. I know that there'll be turf in there. I know there'll be weight room facilities. I know there'll be sports medicine stuff in there because it's a support building for all of our outdoor sports, training and support stuff in there. Um, but how it'll be laid out, what it's specifically going to look at, or look like we're not, we're not to that point yet. The wetland area, I had mentioned about 12 acres here. Trails going around it, public access. This is a retention pond, be able to take water off. There's some really interesting features to this site that I, I've, I've started to get excited about only because our engineers are very excited. And so every time I sit in the room with them, they get more and more excited. Um, Grading is about perfect, in their mind, perfect, 2%, top to bottom, <laughs> left to right. That's apparently perfect for them. Um, these are all synthetic. Uh, we won't go natural with those. Uh, and that's, that's an important piece to this because this entire space is a water management space. And so by going natural, you don't have control of water. By going synthetic, we actually can control where the water goes, how fast it goes there, stuff like that eventually everything moving this way and then out. So that's a, that's a critical component to this, this whole thing. Another view of it. That one's hard to see. These are going to be tough to see for you. This is looking back from Lacey Road. A little bit better? Not quite. <clears throat> Just kind of some artist ideas of the components. And again, none of this is in stone. This was just to get us started. We'll certainly be changing a lot of this. And but all of those are obviously going to be college certified sites. Yes. Yep. They all will be. Yes, they will. Yep. So a good example of that is this track is huge. So uh, the collegiate, collegiate track, collegiate soccer fields are much long, larger than high school. Uh, your turns are much larger. Um, so we're, yeah, we'll go as big as we can because it's always easier to have competition. We can bring a high school team in to run a track meet, stuff like that here. We can't bring a college event in here if we go smaller. So yeah. People always ask me, I'm going to go back one time, people always ask me, uh, I've, I've had this question probably about 20 times, where are the football lines? We don't have a football team, so there are no football lines. So no plans to bring the high school team to play over? There are not right now, no, no. So it's an Edgewood College facility, yeah. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Softball component, that is turf as well. That's a, that's a new trend in the, in the sports industry market. Uh, the idea of having uh, synthetic softball surfaces um, is now playing out pretty well. If you've been over to Madison College at all, their new stadium is synthetic uh, for softball. Um, you can actually control the height and length of surfaces, make it play faster or shorter. It's, synthetic surfaces have come a long way. People always ask me about attendance numbers, so it just give you an idea. We're a Division III institution. Our attendance numbers really fluctuate based on the number of local players on our rosters. So, for instance, this year, 
I would say that if we look at baseball, I'm the baseball coach as well. You saw one four, you see 152 there. We will crush that number this year in attendance for baseball. I have 10 guys that were very successful high school players in the area that are on my roster. Uh, that typically results in a lot more local people coming out to watch them play and stuff. So, you know, but we're not, we're going to, you know, people always ask me, you know, probably 200 people at an event kind of thing. So we're not, we're not drawing thousands of people to our events. Although, I'm not going to stop if you all want to. <laughs> when we talk about the stormwater pieces of it, um, when we look at this site, so for those of you that aren't familiar, um, we have just recently in Dane County gone to a 200-year um, uh, flood event. We used to be 100-year, and it's also back-to-back 100 -back years. So we started that process over a year ago when we started modeling water. We kind of had an anticipation from our engineers that that was coming down the pipe. We didn't know what communities were going to adopt that and that kind of thing. So we decided let's just let's calculate from those numbers right away. Let's not, let's not have to adjust later on. And so when we talk about this site and its ability to control and manage water, that's an important thing to get like right now, well, three months ago, we were operating off of a 100-year flood event to meet uh, standards. This site, we're operating off a 200-year or back-to-back -back hundreds. So we're doubling uh, the ability to handle water on this site. Um, can see the other things. Dirty water will go into that big pond to be treated. The fields actually act as, as filters. Um, if, you've, if you're not familiar with how an artificial surface goes in, there's actually more space under the field than there is above, and so you use drainage tile and so on to slowly move water, control water movement as it, it gets through the surface very quickly, and then you control it once you get it into the basin. And then, of course, as I said, um, folks on our campus, there's a lot of excitement about the, uh, what they're calling their laboratory um, in, the, in the wetland area. I, did, I have to keep reminding him to restore a wetland takes a long time. Like, I had that conversation, I was meeting with one of our professors the other day. He said, I can't wait to get students out there. I'm like, you understand it takes like 10 years to <laughs> introduce things and restore a wetland. And it, I, was, I was a buzzkill. So. <laughs> when we look at traffic, I get this question a lot. Timing is everything, and as many of you know, City of Fitchburg was doing a traffic study for Lacey and Seminole and whether or not to put the roundabout there, and it was perfect timing for us to piggyback on their study. So we had AECOM come in, did an independent study looking at the same numbers, and um, we were super excited to find out, when you go to the bottom piece there, that into our site, if we are completely at capacity, we've got a queuing of two cars at any turn lane. So, um, based on what, their, what the plans are to do with uh, that intersection at, at Seminole and Lacey. So that was exciting to us, uh, to know that we weren't going to create issues for traffic backup and stuff like that at peak times. Kind of get an idea. Three entrances into the site is what's been proposed. And then traffic engineers doing their magic and put in the proper stuff to make sure. Lighting is another big thing. Everything will be lighted um, on, on the property. However, if you're not familiar with athletic lighting, so this is where we were in 2015. It's a long time ago. So this actually, what appears to be no light on this picture, this produces more light than any of these. The difference between the lighting now and then is not only is that disappear from a distance, but we have the ability now with athletic lighting to, to focus it even more. So um, we, this will be a dark, uh, a dark sky compliant site. That's, that, is not a, that was decided early on in this project. This is to give you an example. This is over in Sheboygan. Um, so this was done just before the pandemic. Wildwood Park, very old park. Um, give you an idea, there are residential homes right back here. I know that because we've played here and we've had home runs go into people's porches. So that's how close those homes are and it's literally a black curtain. So um, very exciting to be able to to take advantage of technology. Same with, uh, with sound. 
So we just completed a, a, a um, partner project with Mesa over at Redden Soccer Park and um, utilizing focus sound. We can actually create enough sound. I've stood out here to introduce people and not be able to hear myself speak. And I've had the residents here at the care home uh, call me in the office and ask if there was some way we can turn the speakers because they like to sit out on their balcony and watch our teams, but they can't hear. So interesting problem to have as a director of athletics. Normally I'd get those calls figuring they're, hey, it's too loud. And they're actually, is there any way you can give us one speaker so we can hear what's going on? Home. To your point about the size of the fields and stuff like that and, and the high school and everything. So th there is no mistake about this. This is something we're passionate about for our students at Edgewood College, for our student athletes. Um, I've got uh, right now roughly 300 and some student athletes. Uh, we've just recently added uh, men's and women's lacrosse um, over the pandemic, because why not add, a sport, add sports over a pandemic? It makes sense. Um, and uh, men's volleyball as well. So we've got new sports more and more student athletes, as well as trying to provide intramural recreation opportunities for our students uh, on campus. So you can see what sports there uh, we're looking in terms of training and competition. Um, men's and women's golf, one of the things that we do know about the building, for instance, I do know that there'll be golf simulators in there. I do know that there'll be putting space in there. Um, and I know that because somebody has already said I'm paying for those and that, so that's checked off the box. Um, they uh, um, certainly, as I said, our environmental studies folks are excited about that. Um, we do intend, people ask me, do we, do, we in, do we have intentions of having events there, allowing other people to use it? We absolutely do. I, I, we totally envision um, elementary school, uh, secondary uh, school events there, uh, WIA events, um, club events, things like that. Um, however, we're going to tiptoe into that very slowly. Um, Again, working in Verona, one of the things that we've learned with the new Verona High School is, and I thought they did a great job with this, is they kind of hit pause on rental for a little bit. Um, and a lot of companies, a lot of, a lot of organizations will jump right in. We're going to have all this use. And then there, in our case, our students would get mad at us. Hey, what are you doing? Why can't we get in? Well, we're confirmed with contracts with somebody else. So we want to make sure that we're serving our students' needs knowing that we'll have space, but we want to get the temperature of what that space will be like and, and, and how we can do that in the, in the best way possible. Um, we've, uh, we, we've always had a great relationship with Madison Area Sports Commission. So uh, Jamie Patrick over there, you know, he's getting updates weekly from me. Where are we at? How are we doing? Can I start scheduling events? Stuff like that. I'm like, no, Jamie, you got to hold, hold off for a little bit more time. Um, and, then, um, and then obviously having the wetland uh, it is a priority to us to make that available to residents for walking, being able to explore. If, and if you're familiar with that area right there, it's a neat feature to be able to just, if you can park in a parking lot, wander around um, and see wetland, especially in the, probably the first 10 years, watching it be restored and kind of seeing it morph as it, as it grows. All right. So let's take some questions. We good? Yep, we'll do. Do we have some questions? Yes? Uh, overall timeline. <laughs> uh, overall timeline. So uh, the, the question is overall timeline, where, where are we at and stuff. So we are hoping to have land finalized and everything by early April. Um, and we are just now starting to work on uh, the secondary planning process. Um, it, it, people ask me, when are we going to put a shovel in the ground? Honestly, I don't know yet. I, I really don't know yet. Um, we will probably in April, what we'll start prioritizing are where are we starting with the project, which dominoes are going to fall first. Um, we have some thoughts on that right now, but as you can imagine, part of that is donors that have an interest in naming rights will, might trump to the front of the line, um, prioritizing what might have the greatest impact on our students. Uh, if you're not following higher ed right now, um, just you know, there's less students coming out of high schools. So that could have an impact. Which, which number of new students might we serve with a component of the project? Um, it's a significant project, so more than likely it's not all happening at once. It'll happen in stages. So I know that doesn't really answer your question, but it's the best I can do for you right now.
Yes. A question for you. You have 18 athletics, you said, or 16? Yeah. So kind of walk through what happens, you know, in, in the spring and the fall, and how is that used year-round? Yeah. Just, I mean, just track in the spring and yep. process in the fall, or how that going to work, just kind of your timing of your sports and, and how many events do you anticipate happening at a certain time? There? Yeah, so the question basically is what does the college athletic season look like with all the sports and everything? So uh, a difference between college and secondary high school is that collegiate athletics is year round. So, for, and I'll use baseball as an example. I'm the baseball coach, it's an easy one for me, okay? So we have a fall season, which is essentially a training season. Very few events, in fact, we get one contest day. That's all the NCAA allows us. Our main season is in the spring. And so then we'll play upwards of 20 games in the spring. A sport like soccer, fall is their main season. Fall is their practice season. So your number of contests are about the same fall and spring. The only thing else that happens is you've got teams that are practicing and training, getting ready for that next season. So in the summer months or the dead of the winter as we are now, yeah. do you anticipate or whenever off public events or community events or could community facilities use it? I know Fitchburg Parks and Rec has a lot of mm -hmm. programming and mm -hmm. stuff. What do you see as external partnerships say, in yeah. the local area? So the, utilizing the winter months, utilizing the summer when we're not in competition mode, what kind of community partnerships might be able to take advantage of it might we look at. In, um, certainly in the winter, there's still going to be training going on, but obviously most of that will happen in a training building. Um, the external things, probably not going to be a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of use there, right? Um, a lot of that for the winter is going to depend on how that building plays out. If that building is more geared towards training just because of the given space and the number, that's going to limit our ability for groups to use it for certain things. Um, now we might be able to use it, people may be able to rent it for training, stuff like that. Uh, we may be able to, you know, partnership with, with City of Fitchburg Park and Rec for certain events in there. Um, but again, that's going to kind of depend on how that programming develops in that footprint. In terms of summer, that's really when we see ourselves being able to partner the most with folks. Um, whether that be, you know, we're certainly going to run events that can generate revenue for us, tournaments, things like that. But um, I've already been in conversations with folks, for instance, about if you're familiar with First Tee, um, uh, conversations about things like that to be able to use the golf piece and be able to develop th some stuff like that. Um, we've had a longstanding relationship with Boys and Girls Club, so I can see some natural things there. Um, certainly tennis. Uh, our tennis coaches uh, do lessons and stuff. They've already said, hey, is this an opportunity for us to do some tennis stuff in the community? So I think a lot of those things will happen. Um, again, we're going to need to be able to get our hands around, are we meeting our needs first? What I don't want as a director of athletics is grumpy students. There's nothing like having something shiny and then telling students to get away from it. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? So talking about that a little bit, the, the building, the rectangle. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you focused on student athletes there and students involved in intramural activities, or is it the entire student body? So uh, the primary function is training space for our student athletes. Um, we do envision components to that building where we will be able to provide some intramural opportunities for our students as well. Um, so right now, for instance, a big chunk of that building is being envisioned as turf space. So, you know, you can run intramural soccer, you can run, you know, ultimate frisbee out of that type of space, um, flag football, different things like that. Um, there's also some pseudo court space that's also used for strength training uh, that potentially can provide basketball space, stuff like that. Not where you could have tournaments and stuff because the surface wouldn't be good, but for intramurals it would work fine. Um, so those are the things that we're, we're kind of figuring out right now. Uh, one of the components that we haven't even uh, taken a dive into yet is with track, do we want to create sprint space, actual indoor track space around the turf, that kind of thing, um, and, and is the space suitable for that? So those are the components that we'll be, we'll be working on over the coming months. And, and as you can imagine, those will dictate then what we can do community-wise. Other questions?
Yes, sir. Uh, any concerns that a power heading variety might uh, land on the lazy road? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that would that, the, the question was, do I have any concerns that a power hitting righty might put a ball on Lacey Road? There's actually a lot more space there than it appears on there. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to really get a hold of one. I've got a kid from Verona on my team right now that actually put a ball, two balls last year on the median across over the trees at Stample Field. So he could do it. Uh, that doesn't come along very often. He holds our home run record. So. Um, uh, I'd be very excited about that, but no, I don't. I, I actually asked our, our, uh, our folks about that, and they said, no, you've got a lot of space. That guy would have to really be able to crush one. So, yeah. Yes? Uh, more of an athletics question. Uh, this weekend, um, the BA hosted their inaugural Women's Wrestling Championship in lacrosse. Yeah. Which I was completely fascinated with. I didn't know that was even a thing. Yep, yep. Their inaugural championship. Can you speak real quick from an athletic standpoint, what's coming to colleges? What are the sports that are being Ooh. considered? And, yeah. Um, so women's wrestling has has just has blown up. Uh, it, it is it it went from an emerging sport to enough schools across the country offering it. Um, it's I, in fact I believe it's it's outpacing uh, uh, men's wrestling at the collegiate level in terms of growth. Um, we just uh, I just got back from NCA convention. Equestrian has been a big push for a long time, um, and people assume that equestrian is a sport that. Uh, and I, sorry for the folks at home, I wonder, the, the question was what kind of sports are emerging uh, within the NCA? What are we seeing changing? Um, equestrian, people assume that the cost is why schools don't want to do equestrian. I'm surprised to learn that that's actually not the reason. Uh, the reason is as soon as it, equestrian falls under NCAA, um, it, there's events that get taken away. And so you don't have as many opportunities. And so there's schools that have very strong equestrian programs that actually don't want to see the NCA take it because they can do some more stuff. Um, we have a school in our conference that has stunt right now. Um, so stunt is gymnastics on steroids. Um, it's tumbling. It, it's like everything that could involve gymnastics plus. And uh, we just had another school that just announced that they'll be starting stunt. So that's a new sport. Um, not enough schools to make it an NCAA sport yet, uh, but it's getting there. Triathlon is a women's only sport in the NCAA, and that has moved from the emerging category. Enough schools are offering that uh, right now. Uh, bowling is another sport that's actually women only in the NCAA, and it's growing quite a bit. Um, bowling used to be dominated by Division I schools, essentially, and now it's all the way Division I, II, and three. Um, Esports is the biggest uh, kind of conversations happening. Um, we just made some big changes in our esports programming. It was previously fell under student life kind of as an intramural type thing, club thing. Um, it is now a varsity, varsity sport with three components. So we actually have an uh, esports A division varsity, which is scholarship, uh, esports B division, which is non scholarship, and then C division, which is club. And there are certain events they can compete in, um, but that is one that I don't think it'll get to the NCAA level, a sponsored sport, again, because it would limit what they can do and stuff, but uh, it's growing across campuses quite a bit. Um, and tell an esports player that it's not a sport and you'll pick a fight. Uh, it's, we, it's an interest, it's a, I, call it, I call it the anti-sport, because in all of our traditional sports, we're pushing to train harder, and in esports, we're pushing to train less. It's very interesting because when they get in front, they get lost in the computer, they get lost in it, and our coaches actually have to pull them back and say, enough, you need to take a break, you need to, to chill a little bit. And so it's, I call it the anti-varsity sports. It's very different, the, the training techniques, yeah. So. Is there any way you could go back to the slide that has kind of the orientation of where the different fields are? I think so. I can see it better now. Why did you choose those locations and the other things? Great question. Where is that bike trail on there? You know, we're blessed out here, as you know, five bike trails and a lot of bike trails go through, and I'm sure you totally know that. And if you were to screw up the bike trail, you'd have like 5,000 people in the city. What if we made it better? <laughs> so the question was, why this layout, and how does a bike? How does the bike trail? And um, yeah, which way does the water flow? How does it? How does it fit in? And how? Which way does water flow? So. 
we are high to low, left to right. Okay, about a 2% grade working down to here in a drainage ditch. Bike trail access, we're envisioning coming right into here with some features in here uh, uh, so, that, so that people can get, get in there. This bike trail, by the way, runs right from our campus, which is also fantastic. So, um, and we've had students that have asked about that already. I mean, I can just ride up there. It's about an 18 minute ride, but yeah, you could. Um, the, uh, so, so that'll be a, a, a great piece. The layout actually, um, and that, that's a, a very good question, it, it is strategic. So um, the areas that water cannot go through are on the high side, right? We don't want a building to be down here and then deal with the basement filling up with water and stuff. We want the water to move in that direction. So everything that cannot, we can't control the water is on the high side. As it moves down, you can see strategically the largest surface areas start to take the water. So this is all part of that water management plan. And parking lots are where? Parking lots are right here. Yep. So that's, and the parking lots will be, that water goes into here. Everything else moves this way. Um, and so really it is, it's controlling that water flow down into here and then once we get it into the wetland, then we can control how much goes out. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you encountered any barriers or pushback or anything like that from community or anything otherwise? No. That's awesome. No, the, the question was, have we, have we encountered any barriers or pushback from the community? Um, and, and no, we've had questions. They've been great questions. Um, We've had people bring things to light that we didn't know. Um, and so we were able to dive in and do some homework and they were things that we wanted to know. Um, obviously anybody that's done any kind of a building project, the more you know, the scary part is putting a shovel in the ground, right? You don't really know what's under there. So the more information we can get and the more people can say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? The more comfortable we are to the point when we put the shovel in the ground. Um, but we've had great questions. Um, we've had we've had great dialogue with with the residents um, that that have been in, in engaged in the, in the process. Um, I think we've done a good job over the pandemic. It's been very hard to get in front of people. Um, so I've been people have my cell phone number. People have been fine calling that, and and I'm fine taking. In fact, I just talked about somebody the other day, um, and it was on my cell. It was just a you know conversation. Hey, can you walk me through this? How does this work? How does that work? Um, and I think that's really important. I mean, that's, uh, you know, again, when you're dealing with Edgewood College, that's how we, uh, at least in my time, my 22 years, that's how we do things. Like, it's very transparent. And so, um, so it's, been, it's been really good to have that engagement. Yeah. So the Badger State Trail is on the right side of that? Yep. And now, is anything, uh, is, is it planned to just leave that footprint alone? Like this, nothing's this, gonna happen to it? Yeah, so the question is, what are we gonna do with this triangle? So we're not gonna own that triangle. Uh, it's gonna sit there. Um, it will be incorporated into the, the water piece here because it has to be. I mean, you, can't just, you can't just ignore the whole region, you know, portions of the region because it's all tied together. Uh, but essentially, it will be, it'll be left fallow. For, for now is, is the plan and I don't you know there's no plans in the future for it that I'm aware of. So the trail will stay where it is. So yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely we won't we won't touch the trail at all. Yeah. We're we're well away from that. Yep. Yes. This is from the online group George yeah. Fry uh, says do you have a department that could do a cost benefit to the city and its businesses? Do um, we have not we have not, do I need to repeat that question? You good? Okay. <laughs> um, we, uh, uh, we have not yet. Uh, we have not yet do dove into those numbers. Um, we know that there are going to be benefits when we start bringing events in, um, tournaments, stuff like that, groups that have started to ask about those things, but we have not nailed down those numbers yet. We'll start working on that stuff probably with the Madison Area Sports Commission uh, in the near future. Yes. Has an architect been yet? 
I can't. Has an architect been chosen yet? For the preliminary work, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, um, but we will be so Rettler is going is will be our project manager. They have since day one. Um, and a big reason is they've actually worked with us in the past on some water management issues on our campus. Once we identified that wetland, uh, they became very clear that, that we wanted them involved. Um, and um, so we'll go through the bidding process for architects, um, uh, every, every piece of the scope. Um, and the only thing we know right now is that Rettler will be the, the project manager. Great, any more questions? All right. Thank you all very thank much. Thank you so much, Al. Yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, we're going to do, do the business card draw. We have two prizes um, for you guys today. For, so did anybody not put their business card in? Did you stop time? But before we do that, um, I'm going to have Scott, our previous president, stand up. He has to do something really quick. <laughs> That's open-ended. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, back uh, last year, uh, it, Angela wasn't even, I don't know if she was aware of it or not, but she had uh, turned 20 years that she had been uh, the president of the chamber. <laughs> and so we did an announcement and gave her a little kudos at the, uh, at the golf event, but we decided as a board that we wanted to uh, give her a little plaque. And uh, so we got that done in June or July of last year. We're like the next live event we're going to hand that to her and this is the next live event so we almost had to change the uh, plaque to say 21 years but uh, so it's small and it's a, a glass uh, so it's a little hard to read so I'll say I printed this out so that you guys could all see uh, what it looked like but really it's so I could read it uh, so it says uh, congr uh, congratulations for 20 years of service presented to Angela Kinderman thank you for all your hard work dedication and passion in making Fitchburg Chamber such a vital part of our city and the business community. So, Angela, if you want to come up. <laughs> Eight months of sneakiness. Hold on, no. She's taking a picture. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. 20 years go by fast. Last last summer, I thought I was on year 17. So I must have blocked a couple of them out. <laughs> but last summer, Jim McNulty was digging through uh, some old bins at Oak Bank, and he found a 20-year-old newsletter, printed, by the way, So um, that was welcoming to me to the organization. So it's been uh, really my pleasure and um, never a dull moment, that's for sure. So thank you, guys. That's really nice. 